Hello, my name is Ron Pressler. By day, I work at Oracle and OpenJDK. That's the main implementation of the Java platform. But I've been working with TLA+, both professionally and now mostly as a hobby for several years. This talk is intended as what I'll call a TLA+, truffle. Back in the 80s, the computer scientist John Bentley wrote a column in the communications of the ACM called Programming Pearls, about which he wrote, Just as natural pearls grow from grains of sand that have irritated oysters, these programming pearls have grown from real problems that have irritated programmers. The programs are fun, and they teach important programming techniques and fundamental design principles. Years later, Richard Bird edited a column in a similar vein in the Journal of Functional Programming and explained that a pearl is not original research or an industrial case study, but an instructive example, a nifty presentation, or an interesting application of a technique that should be polished, elegant, instructive, and entertaining. And the idea was borrowed elsewhere in the form of graphics gems and perhaps others. And so, in the same spirit, I propose TLA plus truffles. I don't promise to live up to Bird's standards, but I will try to offer something for everyone. Some manipulation of formal logic, some exploration of semantics, some use of TLC, and some interesting applications. We have quite a journey ahead of us, so let's begin. As we all know, Leslie Lamport, the inventor of TLA+, and the logic at its core, the Temporal Logic of Actions, or TLA, recommends that system specifications be written as state machines, which, in TLA, are written as the canonical formula of an initial state predicate, a state transition, or an action, with a subscript that can be any state function, but normally is a tuple containing the variables mentioned in the formula, and some fairness conditions. This is very good advice, and indeed, the TLC model checker that comes with the TLA plus toolbox can only check TLA plus formulas of this canonical form. But I would like to talk about a different shape of formula, show how it can be checked with TLC, albeit with some inconveniences, and present three examples where such formulas could be useful. A TLA formula F specifies a class of behaviors where our behavior in TLA, as you should know, is an infinite sequence of states, each state a mapping from variables to values. Our formula only mentions a finite small set of variables, but the class of satisfying behaviors contain those that assign any arbitrary value to any variable not mentioned in the formula at each state. In other words, the formula describes all those behaviors of an entire world that contains our system of interest. If formula F describes a world containing one system and formula G a world containing another, then a world containing both will be an intersection of those worlds and it is described by the formula that is the conjunction of F and G. In this way, Conjunction in TLA describes any form of composition of two or more systems or components, although if they interact in any way, then they must share some of the variables they mention. That conjunction is such a simple expression of composition in TLA has some immediate consequences. For example, it is an immediate result of propositional logic that if F implies A, meaning that the property A holds an F's world, and G implies B, then the conjunction of F and G implies both A and B. This is always true, but we must be careful, as it could be true vacuously. The intersection of the two worlds could be empty if the conjunction of the two formulas is equivalent to false. This is the one downside of TLA's elegant formalization of composition that I can think of, and unfortunately, while it is possible to check if a specific formula is equal to false in TLC, TLC does not currently offer a way to do it generally and automatically, even though it could by allowing us to check if the specification implies a false property, and I think it should and hope it will. We will be looking at conjunctions of canonical forms. They don't specify one state machine, 
but a composition of two or possibly more. This can be used to write a composed specification, and we'll see one example of that. But because TLA doesn't distinguish between systems and properties, it can also be used to specify and check interesting properties. To be able to check such a formula in TLC, we'll need to transform it into the canonical form. In the next few slides, I will use colors to distinguish clauses rather than subscripts like init1 and init2. I hope that will be clear. First, we rewrite our formula like so. Then we see that most of it can be easily copied into a canonical formula, the initial state predicate and the fairness conditions. But the problem is the middle part containing the temporal operator and the action, because a canonical formula allows only one box action clause. To rewrite the two box action clauses into one, we'll use some logical identities. Number one, we know from proposition and logic that conjunction and disjunction distribute over one another. Number two, we know that in temporal logic, box A and box B is equal to box A and B. Finally, we know in TLA, box square brackets action subscript bars is equal to box action or run changed bars. The shaded area has formulas that aren't well formed in TLA, but we can use them to make a correct deduction. Using those identities, we can rewrite the two box action clauses into one. We get this. And then this well-formed TLA expression. If one set of variables is contained in the other, we can eliminate either the second or third disjunct because it will equal false. And if the two sets of variables are the same, we can eliminate both and just remain with the first disjunct. With this, we now know how to conjoin two canonical formulas into one canonical formula in TLA. What can we do in TLA plus, and in particular in a way that is checkable by TLC? We begin by writing the result from the previous slide as a definition, but this doesn't quite work with TLC. The reason is that when TLC evaluates an expression, it requires that the first time it encounters a prime variable, possibly after skipping arbitrary disjunct, it must appear in the form x equals something or x is a member of something. This might not be the case here in the second and third disjunct, even if we write next a and next b carefully. Fortunately, unchanged x is interpreted as x prime equals x so all we need to know to do is change the order of our conjuncts. We put unchanged first and we're done. Instead of writing the first bank, we write the equivalent bottom one that is canonical and can be checked by TLC. There might be some subtleties with fairness, but to be honest, fairness is not needed in the examples I'll show you, so I didn't look into that and I'll leave out fairness in the rest of the talk. Now, what if we want to compose more than two formulas? We just repeat. This actually works. And by the way, this is why I don't include the box and square brackets in the definition of compose. So that's the idea. Now, what can we do with it? The first use case I'd like to show is specifications in the style of behavioral programming invented by David Harrell and his students. Behavioral programming is a paradigm that Harrell believes could make going from specification to implementation easier in an iterative and interactive process. The idea is that we write a program by gradually layering rules with different priorities on top of each other. To change the program, we add a new rule that refines it. The rules are actually called behaviors or behavior threads, each of which corresponds quite nicely to a state machine specification in TLA, and the layering of rules corresponds to conjoining canonical formulas. So in this use case, 
we are actually going to write a specification as a conjunction of canonical formulas. The paper gives an example of specifying slash programming the game of tic-tac-toe, and using what I showed you, I was able to specify the game in TLA Plus in the gradual iterative style of behavioral programming. I will go over the example very quickly just to give you a taste of the idea. There is no need to carefully read the spec snippets on the slides. I'll point out the important bits. We begin by specifying a 3x3 three three board where each step, if there is a free square, an X or an O piece is placed in it. We can already state a property that says that a filled square is never vacated and check it with TLC. We then lay another rule that enforces alternating turns. First, X plays, then O, and so on. This rule is expressed as a separate state machine in the formula enforce turns, which is then conjoined to the previous spec to form tic-tac-toe 2 that we can check once we apply the technique we learned. We then add a rule, another state machine, detect win, that detects a win or a draw. And we can again conjoin it to tic-tac-toe 2 and check some properties. If we play like this, the player is making arbitrary moves, this is a TLC output we get. But now we start adding tactics, each as its own rule and canonical formula that we conjoin to the previous one and that we can check at every step. First we say that if a player can complete a line by marking an empty square, they do it. Then we add a rule that if we can block the opponent from winning in the next turn, we'll do it, but we give it a lower priority than completing our own line and winning. Then we add a lower priority rule that if the center square is free, we place our square there. Here, for example, we can check that the first move will always place a piece in the center square. Finally, we add a rule with a lower priority still that says that if a corner is free, place a piece there. At this point, we can already check that the rules we have so far will always lead to a draw. To check each of the steps, we can join the specs as we learned, and this is the full spec containing all seven rules. Checking it with all the interesting properties takes only about seven seconds in my machine. Obviously, there are fewer states than when we play without tactics. Now, I don't know if this style of specification is helpful in TLA+. My conclusion from this particular example is that perhaps not so much, but maybe this specification is too simple. You can find the full specification here and judge for yourself. But I think it's cool that we can use TLC to check at least some specifications that are not in the canonical state machine style. And here are some resources where you can learn more about behavioral programming. In the next example, we are not going to use conjunction to write a specification, but rather to check a special kind of property called a possibility property. The idea is based on a paper by Leslie Lamport. A possibility property asks, is it always possible to get from any reachable state of the system to some state P? In the paper, Lamport says that while possibility properties are not as important as safety or liveness properties, they could be of interest as a sanity check. TLA, being a linear temporal logic, does not allow to directly express possibility, but Lamport shows that if the possibility property holds, it is always possible to find some new action M with associated fairness G that restricts and directs the state machine's next state action to take us from any arbitrary reachable state of the system to the state P. This is a process analogous to existential quantifier elimination, and then this is a proposition we need to prove. 
While the spec is given as a canonical formula, the proposition isn't canonical. We have a conjunction with another temporal subformula. But unlike the previous example, we have this diamond operator here. But we can get rid of it. It means that at some point, the M action starts occurring, restricting the next action. So we can recreate the same effect with an additional variable and another fairness condition. We add a new Boolean variable t, initialized to false, and we add a fairness condition that says that eventually it will become true. This will trigger the operation of M. Now we have a conjunction of canonical formulas that we can check. We then notice that the set of variables vars is a subset of vars union t, and so one of the disjuncts in the composition drops off, and after a few steps of rewriting that I'm skipping, for example, I wanted to take the unchanged t clause outside the parentheses, so I introduced the subaction trigger that triggers the operation of M. And we get this canonical formula and a proposition that we can then check in TLC. I haven't actually tried this because I don't have a good example to try it on. But if you come up with one, send it my way. In the final example, we're also going to use conjunction not to specify but to check. Only this time, it's not going to be a property of the specification, but of a real system. One of the questions we often hear from TLA plus newcomers, and not just newcomers, is how do I know that my system conforms to the specification? While humanity currently lacks the technology to soundly verify spec conformance on systems of size that TLA plus is routinely used to specify, perhaps there is some way to test conformance that is more mechanical than just by inspection, and that might not be sound, but at least could be useful in effectively finding bugs in the implementation. One such technique is called model-based trace checking. The idea is to gather logs of execution traces from a real system, the implementation language doesn't matter, and use a model checker to find inconsistencies between the traces and the specified model. Of course, because the traces are finite, we can only check for violations of safety properties. In TLA, a specification G conforms with F, or implements F, or refines F, if the class of behaviors G allows is contained in those F allows. Formally, this happens when G implies F. This, by the way, is my favorite feature of TLA that the abstraction refinement rela relation is expressed as ordinary implication. We would be able to soundly check if a real system implementation conforms with the spec if all of its behaviors are allowed by the spec. Instead, we check that only some of its behaviors, those that come from execution traces extracted from log files, satisfy the spec. Just remember that a single trace doesn't represent a single TLA behavior but a whole class. Aside from the matter of stuttering, the trace allows any unmentioned variable to take any value. So we're still talking about classes of behaviors, which we could then represent with a TLA plus formula. Let's begin with a specification of a simple system. We have a clock that goes tick tock. Every time it ticks, X and Y are assigned an arbitrary value between 0 and 9. And every time it talks, Z is assigned the sum of X and Y. TLC tells us that this system has 2,000 states. For the purpose of demonstration, I will embed the trace directly in the TLA plus file as a sequence of tuples. Of course, in real usage, we'll probably want to write a TLC operator override in Java that will read the trace directly from a log file, and I believe some people have already written such operators and contributed them to the TLA plus community modules. We could write the formula that expresses the trace as behaviors in TLA plus like so. We instantiate the system spec. We define a read operation 
we start by reading the first entry, and then at each step we read another until there's none left. But there are several things that TLC doesn't like here. It doesn't like the tuple equality in the initial state predicate, and it doesn't like a primed operator as the first occurrence of a primed variable. It also doesn't let us directly use model bang bars. So to make this work with TLC, we write the formula in a more cumbersome and less general way with this read and read next definitions, but it works. Then, to check conformance, we simply check that this holds. I want to point out two things here. First, because we're only dealing with finite traces, we can only check conformance with the safety part of the system. We also turn off deadlock detection in TLC. Second, because we're just checking the trace, then it doesn't matter how complex our system spec is. The number of states is determined by the trace, not the system. The trace has 20 records and TLC finds 20 states arranged linearly. We can do even better and exploit TLC to check many traces at once. Suppose we have multiple log files. Again, for the purpose of demonstration, here I've embedded them in the TLA plus specification. This is how we turn the traces into a formula. The only thing that's changed from before is that I've added another index variable, log, that is non-deterministically chosen at the initial state and then remains unchanged during the behavior. Again, we check and we get a small state space that looks, unsurprisingly, like this. So far so good, but we haven't done anything interesting with conjunction just yet. So here the plot thickens. Suppose that our log file only records some of the variables in our system. For example, suppose it only logs the value of z. Does such a trace conform to our spec or not? Does a model allow for such an observable behavior of z? We really want to check this with the variables x, y, and TikTok tre treated as hidden, unobserved variables. It means that for every behavior in trace behavior, there exists a corresponding behavior that satisfies model safety with matching values for z and some values for x, y, and TikTok. But TLC can't check properties with temporal quantifiers, so we need to get rid of it somehow. Ordinarily, we'd eliminate the temporal existential by constructing the sort after behavior ourselves adding auxiliary variables in a refinement mapping to fill in the values for the hidden variables. We read the trace as before, but to turn it into a formula we can check against the system model, we add an auxiliary variable tt that adds a stuttering step to mimic the takes and the talks, and then we conjure appropriate values for x and y. This works, but as those of you who tried that know, adding a refinement mapping and auxiliary variables is not always easy. Ordinarily, we don't have a choice, but in this case, we can use the unique properties of a trace combined with the power of a conjunction to do the work for us. This is what we want to check. And to use TLC, we must still eliminate that temporal quantifier, but we want to do it automatically. We notice something special about trace behavior. Even though, as I mentioned, it corresponds to some infinite class of behaviors, we can think of it as a single behavior as far as our variables are concerned. This is a little hand wavy and the details include equivalence classes. The proposition is true if model safety contains trace behavior, but because there is effectively just one element in trace behavior, this happens if and only if their conjunction is not empty. This is analogous to a set with one element that is contained in another set if and only if their intersection is not empty. And that's equivalent to saying that it is not a theorem that this conjunction is equal to false 
which is equivalent to saying that it is not a theorem that the conjunction implies force. And thanks to what we know, this is something we can check. So we use the conjunction technique to define the conjoined formula in a way that TLC can check. And then we need to check that it is not false. As I mentioned before, TLC does not currently allow us to check if a formula implies false. I hope it will someday. But that's okay, because we can always find something equivalent. So we pick a property that must be true for every behaviour, so that asserting it isn't true is equivalent to saying that our specification is false. Because we want to show that this is not a theorem, we challenge TLC to find a counterexample. If it finds one, we know that the conjunction is not empty, and that our trace does conform to our system model. And this is indeed what we find. But notice what we get. TLC explores many more states than there are in the trace, but far fewer states than there are in the system that I pasted here below for reference. TLC finds a violation of the incorrect assertion that our conjunction is empty, and that violation it finds matches our trace. And if you look at the error trace TLC produces, it actually fills in conforming values of the hidden variables for us. It automatically adds stuttering steps for the ticks and the talks, and it automatically finds values for x and y. You can find the full specification here. How effective is this technique in finding bugs in the real world? On the one hand, checking such a small portion of all system behaviours seems like a stab in the dark. On the other hand, perhaps many translation bugs are shallow and surface quickly, and in any event, this technique might help localise bugs when analysing traces known to be faulty. I'll leave it to others to find out and report. You can find modules with TLC operators that can read log files in the TLA Plus community modules and an example of using this technique in the wonderful walkthrough tutorial of the TLA Plus tools by Marcus Cooper. This is all. I hope you enjoyed.